So we're here at the Great Pyramid of Cholula near Puebla, Mexico. Now this is the largest pyramid in the world. This is larger than the Great Pyramid in Egypt. It's larger than uh, Cahokia, Illinois, Illinois. It's larger than any other Mexican pyramid. And it's, you know, the, la the mass of this, the footprint combined with the height and everything about it is, makes it the largest in the world. So this is quite an impressive site. A lot of people don't realize this. People think the Great Pyramid is the largest in the world. There's obviously controversy about the so-called Bosnian Pyramid, but there's no evidence that's really a proper pyramid. Whereas this is, and this is very intriguing because we're at the south side here, and you can see that behind me there's like three altars, east, north, and west. Now on the east, we're gonna go and have a look at because this is strange massive stone head very similar to an Olmec head so it's intriguing it's in the east because that is the direction of Olmec land and where the Olmecs came from and there is a suggestion which I, I'm, I firmly believe this they were involved in the construction of this site of the largest pyramid in the world Cholula so we're in the area of the three altars at the south southern base of the great Cholula pyramid here in Puebla, Mexico, with the Olmec head, the serpent carving, and the altars that are, that are basically dedicated to Quetzalcoatl. But this is facing east, it's like a doorway to the east, it's like a false doorway, with many psychedelic patterns around it, which could represent the storms, could represent Quetzalcoatl, the kind of serpent. And right next to the Olmec head, just down here, is what looks like a serpent carved into this piece of rock. So I just find it intriguing that if these were actually found at this particular spot, this is the orientation, the direction of where the Olmecs came from. And the fact that they would have this colossal head here does suggest you know, indeed the Olmecs built this site. Now, Cholula was dedicated and built in honor of the great god Quetzalcoatl who was known in Mexico for many thousands of years. He was very much associated with the Olmec. So I suggest, it's just a speculation, that this Olmec head is part of the Quetzalcoatl tradition and they were in fact the builders of this pyramid. Next to it, we have what looks like some kind of serpent carved in stone. And over there, heading, facing the east, is the great altar. But this looks like it's very Olmec in style as well. So on these two slabs, there's an upright here. I'm just gonna scan down. And apparently on the bottom corners, they show you like an undulating serpent going around the edge. And then on the lower slab here, we have more of the feathered serpent carved in low relief on these great slabs of what looks like limestone. But this is not Mayan. This is probably much older. And this could be one of the megaliths that marked an important entrance into the sacred precinct. We'll see around the other side of the pyramid, we're currently on the south side, around one other edge of the pyramid, there's a very interesting stone behind me here, altar number one, again, has the same kind of motifs. These are very, very Olmec style. And so, you know, we have to look at this from a different perspective. This wasn't the Mayans who built this. It wasn't the Tio Takan people. It was probably the Olmecs who came from the east, who came from the direction of where the Olmec head is and where the motif of the plumed serpent is to this area and constructed this site, probably around 400 to 800 BC. So here we have the third altar. You can clearly see the face of the serpent. Two of them carved onto this base. Very intriguing. There's even a, a, a kind of information panel here that actually says that they were influenced by the people of the Gulf Coast, which would have been the Olmec, or certainly they're the people who came after them. Uh, we know they're on the coast because there's representations of starfish and different fish and, uh, and seagulls and things like this. So we know that influence was here. Even the mural painting um, is very reminiscent of the Old Mac as well. And we'll see examples of that as we go around the site and have a look at the museum. So the, chronicle, the chroniclers tell of when Cholula suffered a scarcity of water, which was very serious due to the fact that the majority of the population were dedicated to farming. The farmers went to the priests in search of help and they made a pilgrimage to the upper part of the pyramid where they sacrificed children between six and seven years old. 
According to the custom, the children were the messengers of Tlaloc, the rain god, and upon sacrificing them, they would ask for the rain to the god. This altar, this altar right in front of us here, was constructed after the abandonment of the Great Pyramid. And the courtyard of the altars contained two severely deformed skulls of decapitated children in the way as an offering in front of its stairway on the west side just there. So what we have here is elongated skulls that were deliberately deformed were found right here where we're standing now. So in 1519, Hernan Cortes arrived on the Gulf Coast and made his way through the area of Veracruz to Cholula. He, it was the people here, the tribes here knew he was coming. There was a population of probably 150,000 people at the time. It was a vast area. And they aware of his arrival, so they prepared dancing and feasts and massive greeting, thinking it was the return of Quetzalcoatl because he was a bearded white man, uh, came on ships and he arrived in the year one reed which is the year that was the prophecy of the time of his return after he departed many thousands of years ago and so there is something to be said about why the spanish could rule so easily and defeat all the aztec empire all through mexico because they were believed to be the gods now the spanish chroniclers state that they heard word of from one of their spies that the Aztecs or the Cholulans had got together a massive army to like wipe out the Spanish and so they then the Spanish became aware of this and before they had a chance for this army to act they slaughtered over 3,000 people uh, children women men everyone they could on top of the pyramid and claimed it as a Christian site so there are other versions of the story. One comes from a Cholulan elder who was a witness at the time, and he passed this on from generation to generation, that in fact, it was, the Spanish were incredibly treacherous and nasty, and they just slaughtered over 3,000 people without a care, just to take over that part of the, the country, this whole Cholulan area. And, um, and it enabled them to kind of rule and go inland towards Mexico City. And there was no armies, there was no Cholulan uprising, there was no treachery on the part of the local people. They were just thought it was the return of their great God and the Spanish took advantage of that. So that seems more realistic to me when we look at the stories from other local people around the country when the Spanish arrived. So this site was also which I find very interesting, was also dedicated to Quetzalcoatl. This is known because in 1803, an early explorer came to Cholula and he witnessed a massive jade statue of Quetzalcoatl. So it was well known that this was a site dedicated to the great god. Legend states that Quetzalcoatl actually built this site in prehistory, deep prehistory, and he built it in one night with the help of giants. Now this I find really interesting because when you look at the sheer scale of this, whether it's a myth, whether it's just a story, whether there's some truth in it, we don't know. But it does suggest that the, the legend and the stories of Quetzalcoatl go very, very far back. And there's obvious links with Quetzalcoatl and the Olmec because he arrived initially on the Gulf Coast, an area we're going to be travelling to today and tomorrow and onwards. We're just on the southwestern edge of the Great Cholula Pyramid. You can see some of the construction phases going on here. And just up there is where they found the deformed skulls of the children, the elongated skulls. Up here obviously is the main pyramid. And just down here past this Christian altar is where they've reconstructed, reconstructed a whole bunch of the steps going up on one side. And we're going to take a closer look at these soon. There's a very interesting monolith that sits right next to it. There's a very strange red bird it's just up there. Which I want to try and get on camera. Where are you going? Look at you. So this is that strange stone here at Cholula on the west side of the pyramid. 
it looks like it's got some kind of mortise and tenon joint on top of it it's got a beautiful square hole cut in it as well and it's really interesting because this was found on top of the pyramid in the 1970s so it could be an astronomical sight line through the hole it could even be a soul hole it could be like uh, a line to the stars something that andrew collins has been researching but it's the mortise and tenon joint on top which might, might, it fascinates me because it looks like it was part of a kind of construction like there were lintels on top of it whether this was the case we don't know because this is all that's left and a few scattered pieces of stone uh, in the area but it's one of these anomalies here at Cholula it could be an Olmec marker you know it could be one of their stones here which is similar to what we see in other parts of the Olmec world see this crystal running all the way down here now the sun's on it you can really see the crystalline nature so it could have had an energetic purpose as well as being a monumental purpose it's very interesting it's got away in at least you know five or six tons maybe absolutely beautiful amazing piece see two different styles of construction this looks like the older style obviously and here we have the reconstructed style which some of it may have looked like apparently it's obviously the later construction you get this kind of precision uh, that long ago but this is interesting because I think this is also where some tunnels emerge you can just see like here we go that's the tunnel I was thinking of so that's one of the tunnels we walked through if you continue that is one of the entrances just there interesting so we're now going down one of the tunnels underneath Cholula. Apparently these go on for several miles, or multiple miles, probably eight or 10 miles. But you can just see, this is probably one of the first phases when they were building the tunnels. They go here as well, go all different directions. Amazing. So we're right inside the largest pyramid in the world, right underneath it. This is pretty amazing. What exactly these tunnels were used for isn't clear, but they go on for a very, very long while. They go in all different directions underneath the different pyramids, different earthworks. Not sure how far we can go down here. This just shows you another level, different levels of construction. So this is incredible. This is just, you just go on for miles. We've just been walking for like 10 minutes here. Just keep going, just never ending tunnels. And considering this is the biggest earthwork stroke pyramid on the planet, I wonder if this was part of the kind of energy system when they would run water through here to get electric charge built up. Reminds me of Derinkuyu in Turkey. Once you get deep in the earth like this, oh, there's a different level here. So, the, so these models are obviously showing the different levels different constructions, one on top of the other, as we head further and further in. So as we just saw with the model, these steps here look like they're part of the pyramid in the model. So we, we see a different level, we see a green color there as well. I wonder if that's part of the original paintwork. That's interesting, that goes all the way down even further. Wow, look at that. People have been throwing coins down there for good luck. interesting so it goes much deeper than what we're walking in now we're actually walking at a slightly higher level but not at the lowest level even currently so this is something we find in many of these different cultures we know for instance that this area was renowned for farming the builders of Cholula were really into farming that was their thing agriculture was their thing they, they grew many different types of plants were very successful very rich very abundant culture but how did they do it? How did they guarantee their crops? And I believe what's behind me here may hold the key. Now this 
it looks like it's a water channel coming down. And it wouldn't have just been for water, just for like for the sake of water. It was actually to create charge throughout this entire structure. And I believe this was passed on from the Olmex because we know the Olmex had this exact same technique at La Venta, at San Lorenzo, uh, and many of many of the other sites. We can see it continues down that way. We're going this way, and we've just come from that way. Here comes a rainy. When I was here in 2009, this was completely flooded. It was wet. I was here during the wet season. Unusually, it was quite wet in December and January of that 2009, 2010, but this year it's obviously dry over here in February. Continues down there, but up there we have an ascending passage that goes extremely high up, and this is carved out of solid rock. Again, it looks like another 45 degree angle. It's amazing. And then it continues down this way. Again, you can see the steps of another pyramid going upwards there multiple pyramids within pyramids. Here we have another corner here. Another slope going upwards and you can't really see it. So we just come in now to the exit of the pyramid here. Probably walked for about a kilometer, but they do go on for like eight or 10 kilometers in total. But yeah, it's just fascinating. You can still go inside here. Now, daylight. We're now just about to take the final steps up to the top of the great Cholula Pyramid, the largest pyramid in the world. So just down on the northwest side, looking at it from above at the very top of the pyramid here, this is the earthwork we walked past earlier. This is another pyramid structure and you can still see the steps on it. We zoom in a bit closer. And so the whole place had satellite pyramids, and earthworks and other structures stretching out potentially for miles. Because we know that the base of the pyramid, much of it is still below the ground here and it's been built over. Over there we can see other types of earthworks just about, just in the distance there on the side of the road so this could be significant it could be part of the greater Cholula complex you can just see more earthworks this is part actually of the pyramid here as you see it below us various protrusions coming out of the pyramid marking the width and the, the girth of it this is facing west we were just down there in that restaurant on the corner just got some lunch there so this is immense structure it really is immense it towers over the whole area these are the first people we meet on the way in it's very interesting it looks like a Toltec style monument here it's a strange foot that's in the museum at Cholula. It's got like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven toes. That is odd. We've got artifacts made of very ancient artifacts with a diamond on it. And also this strange kind of man bag style we do find at many sites around the world. Check out that. So here we have the great mural that was discovered at Cholula. They reconstructed it accurately apparently you just see really quite beautiful 